from Illinois State University, Normal, yeah. Geography, Education. Uh, he is passionate about furthering the practice of local history through surfacing untold stories and reassessing received memories of the past. That is quite a challenge. I know he's done a ton of work on the Door County Fair and researching the history of that, so please welcome him to tell us all about it. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, this is awkward because I do have to kind of shove the mic into my mouth, so I apologize. <laughs> if anybody can hear me at any point, please uh, let me know. Um, I will do my best to kind of use my uh, uh, teacher voice. Um, but I do want to thank you all for being here. Um, it, I am very excited to talk about the Door County Fair um, and the history of the fair. Um, I am not originally from the county, um, but I used to come up here every year with my parents, and we usually would come uh, uh, middle end of August, and we would end up going to the fair because it was usually around uh, when we were here on vacation. Um, as a historian, um, I, it is my job and passion to do my best to honor your history um, because this is not necessarily mine, even though I remember it and, 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 and I, I am part of it, but this is more about your history. Um, so uh, I, I hope you appreciate all the effort I put into this. Um, I will do my best. Um, I do want to start off by saying that there's over 150 years of fair history, so trying to compress this all into about an hour, maybe 45 minutes, uh, has been a challenge. Um, I've been working on researching the fair for uh, about a year and a half now. Uh, when I started at the museum, uh, th that was one of my first uh, research projects, um, and I instantly fell in love with learning about the fair. I was shocked to learn uh, how much uh, how important the fair is to the county um, and how little really people talk about it. Obviously, people have memories of the fair, but uh, finding information on it was a challenge. So all my information came from the Door County newspaper archives. Um, so everything I'm about to tell you about the history of the fair uh, came from the newspapers. So I do want to take a note, take that with a grain of salt, because as everybody knows, sometimes newspapers can get things wrong. Um, so this is, this is the best I can do. Um, but I am very proud of my work. I love the fair. I love talking about the fair. I do also want to note, um, I originally intended to do this project about the fair as a display at the Door County Historical Museum. So um, the newspaper archives only goes up to 1979. I haven't looked at microfilm or gone and looked at physical newspapers. So obviously there's much more to the fair than up to 1979. But that um, kind of also helps mar uh, narrow it down. And also, uh, I wanted to look more farther back into the history of the fair, given how long ago it started. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little heads up about that. Um, hopefully, uh, like I said, trying to compress this into an hour, hopefully we'll get to 1979, but we'll see. So to get started, um, one thing I do want to make a note of, and some of you might know this, some of you might not. Uh, when I first started researching the fair, one of the first conflicting things I noticed was some people disagree about when the first fair was. And I found that, um, and a lot of you probably do know this, the first fair actually took place um, in October of 1869. Uh, if you go to the actual county fair website, I'm surprised that it says 1871. So I just want to make that clear. It was 1869. Um, but the beginnings of the fair really began uh, right at the end of the Civil War. Uh, the Door County Agricultural Society was formed. Um, the original members um, are some of the big movers and shakers and uh, important people that helped build Door County to what it is today. Um, we have A.W. Lawrence, E.C. Daniels, E.B. Stevens, D.H. Rice, G.W. Allen, P.J. Simmons, uh, George Bassford, John Garland, W.K. Dresser, and James Gillespie. These are all the original members of the Door County Agricultural Society. Um, had a membership of 121 individuals. 
Um, and although the fair, the first fair took place in 1869, um, like I said, uh, 1865 was the beginnings of that. It took about four years to get everything together to actually bring a fair. Um, it was a huge undertaking. Uh, they needed help uh, from the from the state. They needed about a uh, hundred dollars uh, to qualify for Wisconsin State to become a county fair. A uh, hundred dollars was a lot of money back then. <laughs> So t to start in 1869, before the fair took place, in September, uh, the fair purchased 32 acres of land um, from what uh, was known as Bradner Charnley Sawmill. Um, this is an old sawmill that's long gone, um, but they own the property. And it's basically where um, Sunset Park is now. That was the original fairgrounds. Um, at the time, it was called Bradley Lake. Um, and the first fair, like I said, took place in October. It was uh, just on the 20th and the 21st. Uh, entry fee for the fair, this was just people who wanted to participate, not the entrance fee, uh, was $1, um, except people who are in the Agricultural Society, they could enter um, uh, for free. Uh, to get into the fair, it was 25 cents uh, for adults. That's about $5 today, not too bad. Uh, and 10 cents for kids, so that was about $2 today. Um, one of the things that I noticed uh, that surprised me, and it took almost to the turn of the century for really this to happen, uh, at the first fair, there was no liquor to be sold on the grounds or near the grounds, so no beer, which always surprised me. You know, um, you think Wisconsin, you think, you know, a fair, you think they're going to have, you know, maybe penny beers or something like that, so. <laughs> but the original goal of the fair was agriculture, and, you know, now we think of it more kind of a carnival, festival kind of thing, so it kind of makes sense. Um, despite the late season and cold weather, the fair was a success. Uh, apples, pears, and plums were the only fruit exhibited, no cherries. Uh, Robert Laurie, uh, Laurie Quarry, uh, showed 13 varieties of apples. Um, there was a good attendance, um, but not everybody from the uh, county was represented, unfortunately. Um, remember, people for up, further up the peninsula, uh, back then it took a day or more to get down to Sturgeon Bay, so, and advertisement for the fair wasn't uh, as, as well known back then. Um, and we see this as we go through the 1870s. Um, some of the other important members of, uh, that were part of the fair at the time that had won awards are also, like I said, uh, movers and shakers of Door County. Uh, like I said, Robert Laurie. We have uh, Joseph Harris Sr., who founded The Advocate. Um, we have uh, Joseph Zettel. Who, who, <laughs> I was going to say. I assume when I get through this, a lot of you are going to know who these people are, or <laughs> descendants of people I'm mentioning. So, um, and yeah, Joseph Zettel. Uh, the funny thing is, Joseph Zettel actually won for his best pair of oxen, not not fruits. <laughs> Um, but no horse races were established yet. Horse racing would become a huge part of the fair. Um, but again, the first one was really about uh, agriculture. Uh, samples of vegetables, grains, flowers, maple, sugar, fruit, wood, yarn, wooden flannel, rag carpets, silk shirts, flannel shirts, silk bonnets, straw bonnets, horseshoes, and nails. Um, but this is a very, very, remember, this is right after the Civil War. So this is very uh, uh, what we think of as old timey. Um, next, we move into the 1870s. So the image we have, um, I was kind of you know, anticipating getting into the image. Uh, going through the newspapers, this is the earliest image I can find for an advertisement of the fair. Uh, this is from 1875. Um, and this isn't even you know, the county. This is from a local business advertising the fair. I was surprised um, going through the 1870s. Um, the fair wasn't really promoted. It was very steady. It was very consistent. People loved going to the fair, um, but people really didn't talk about it, which surprised me. With Door County being such an essential agricultural uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, society and culture, it's very odd that it ran consistently, but was only, there was only little bit blips and pieces of it. Um, one of the most significant um, things in the 1870s. So what I'm going to do, a little side note, is I'm going to kind of go through every decade and highlight specific fairs that are more, the most interesting, that kind of stand out, that are exciting, um, or had significance in the history of Door County. Um, the most significant one of the 1870s was 1871. Um, and, and does anybody know why 1871 was significant here? Fire. Exactly, the Peshtigo Fire. So I have a little excerpt here from the newspaper, which I find really interesting. Just gives you an idea of what was going on. 
From a variety of causes, the attendance and show of articles at the annual fair last week was decidedly slim, not near as large as during the fair last year. The extremely dry weather of the past summer has dwarfed the size of all kinds of vegetables products, and our, former fe and our farmers felt shy about exhibiting what they had, see had succeeded in raising. The terrible fires that had been raging through the woods also kept many of their home, people's homes who would have otherwise have been in attendance and brought samples of their crops for exhibition. Under all the circumstances, the fair was very creditable. Although it might have been presented a much better appearance had the ladies of the village filled up the shelves allotted to 17, 18, and 19 with the products of their skill, the entries numbered about 160. I just find it interesting that even with that, I, I wouldn't imagine they'd still run the fair, but nonetheless, they did. So I'd mentioned the 1870s were pretty consistent for the fair. Um, as we go on, though, as we get into the 1880s is when things are starting to, are going to get a little bumpy, but uh, nonetheless, still. Uh, for the next decade, the fair would experience a few rough spots, like I said, uh, financial problems from poor exhibits and the lack of attendance. I, I kind of blame that on not advertising. Um, like I said, I could only find a handful, even in the 1880s, of people talking about the fair. Um, this, is, uh, this one is from 1889. I was going to say, probably the speaker kind of feeding back a little bit, so I apologize, guys. If I pull back, it doesn't pop, but if I lean in, you can't hear me, so I, I apologize. But um, this is from 1889. Um, this is at the time probably the most uh, premiums the, uh, the county had offered. $1,500 was a lot of money at the time. Um, from my estimates, probably close to twenty dollars to $30,000 in premiums and purses. So this is a big deal. This is when the county, as we shift more towards the turn of the century, um, the county starts becoming Agriculture and all that really starts becoming, grabbing a grip in the county. Um, let's see here. Um, as we get into, uh, oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, one of the important things that's also commonly mistaken about the fair in the 1880s, so in 1887 there was a, there was a um, Civil War reunion. Um, it is commonly misconstrued uh, that it was 1885, which would make more sense because that would be the 20-year anniversary of the end of the Civil War. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find an advertisement from 1887, so this will have to do. Uh, we're going to move on to the 1890s. Was it always in September back then, or now it's shifted? So actually, I, I will touch on that, um, and thank you for asking. Um, the, sh the, the fair shifted quite often. So originally, if you remember uh, me mentioning, uh, the first one was in October, then they started shifting it back farther and farther to kind of meet with uh, uh, farmers' needs and the weather. And as we see as we go throughout, um, it shifts back and forth from August, sometimes to October, sometimes back to September. And what they're trying to do back then is, is <laughs> try to kind of predict the weather to the best of their abilities, but as, as you'll find out very often, they missed the mark and it would end up pouring rain and the fair might have been canceled, so. Um, but they did their best. Um, but yeah, so the original goal of, of being in September is to meet with the cherry harvest and, and, and farming. Um, but in 1887, um, like I said, was, uh, the fair was combined with the veterans of the Grand Army of the Republic, the Union Civil War Union, uh, with some 300 veterans in attendance. Um, veterans from Kiwani County, Brown County, obviously Door County. Um, they all had free admission, uh, meals for the soldiers. Uh, there was a huge uh, agricultural ball. Uh, and this is where we really start getting into horse races. Uh, you can see in the advertisement, like I said, huge purses, prizes, and premiums. Um, but at the time, this was probably the biggest fair. Um, like I said, 1887, that's from 1889. Um, but nonetheless, the fair is really starting to grow into something bigger than just a small little agriculture fair. Um, and this ad kind of gives you a good idea of that. Um, let's move on to the 1890s. Uh, this is one of my favorite ads. So this is from 1892. Um, this is right before the, the fair would be canceled, basically for 15 years. Um, the fair wasn't held again until 1908. Um, but this is the last fair before then. Um, I'll get into why that is, um, but I love this ad. Um, balloon ascension, parachute leap. So they had a giant you know, balloon you think of around the turn of the century, and they had a gentleman who parachuted out. It was a huge spectacle. The other thing on here, if you'll notice, is the mention of, and I had to look this up. I wasn't quite sure, Scottish games? Scottish. 
Scottish Games, if you don't know, are it's essentially, think of it as like Olympic events. They had running and throwing and, and hurdles and things like that. But one of the most unique things I found about Scottish Games, apparently the fair also had broadsword battles where people would come and do sword battles, which I found endlessly fascinating. And these weren't special trained professionals. They literally would let people come to the fair and do sword battles, which I think is absolutely incredible. I was going to say, and after this, the fair was canceled, but that's not the reason why. But the fair was beginning to gain more momentum, ironically, at this time. Um, this was, at this point, in the 18, early 1890s, the biggest fair. Um, but like I said, it came to an end, um, where even a double balloon ascension couldn't lift the, the Door County Agricultural Society out of financial debt. Um, and also in the American uh, uh, economy at this time was not doing very well. Um, one thing you'll kind of note as I'm going through this, the fair, um, the Door County Fair I find very interesting is almost a ripple, an echo of what is going on in the country at the time. Um, so a lot of, uh, so as we'll get closer to World War I and when I talk about World War II, you'll see how the Door County Fair reflects the attitudes of the country and the county. Um, but the part of the big reason actually, um, besides the economy, was uh, the fairgrounds actually burned down in 1893. And the Door County Agricultural Society didn't have enough money um, to be able to repair it. Um, they had also mortgaged the fairground property for much more than it was actually worth. Uh, the mortgage holder even offered to reduce the value by $30,000, $1,000 back then, $30,000 today. Um, but they couldn't afford it, and it was foreclosed upon. So like I said, it, was, it would be about 15 years um, until the fair came back. So we're going to jump ahead because not much happened. This is from 1911, I believe. Um, this is probably one of the other earliest images I could find of the fair. It is fantastic. Um, I love it. I'm not quite sure, given the way those gentlemen are dressed, I would assume they're airplane pilots. Um, airplane show was a huge part of the fair at the time. Um, but we'll get up to that, but this is a nice image to leave up. Looks like a baseball game. It could be a baseball game. I just, given, uh, given their hats and... I could be wrong. You could, it could be a baseball game. Baseball games are a huge part of the fair at this time, too. But as we get past the turn of the century, um, uh, the demand for a fair uh, was always there, even the 15-year hiatus. Um, and a proof of this was uh, a particular character some of you might be familiar with from the history of Door County, uh, a gentleman named Barney Hahn. Um, he was, like I said, a colorful, controversial character. Um, he was known, known in Door County, and specifically in Sturgeon Bay, for uh, establishing the Opera House and Theater in Sturgeon Bay. Um, he also owned a farm uh, outside of Sturgeon Bay and eventually in Fish Creek. Uh, he's known for his business ventures, but mostly known for his legal troubles, um, among other controversies. Hint, hint, pretty sure everybody believes he burned the opera house down and his own barn um, for the insurance money, but it's never proven. But if you look through the newspaper, most people assume this. Um, the reason I actually I bring him up, though, for being such a controversial figure, he, uh, uh, he was actually important in getting the fair back on track. So during the hiatus of the fair, he actually hosted his own fair uh, on his own private property, and it was a huge success. So this demonstrated to the county there was a reason to have a fair again. So for all his difficulties, all his controversies, all his nonsense, he was actually a huge booster for, for Door County, the fair, uh, tourism. I bring him up because I find him very interesting. And if you look through the newspaper archives um, from the turn of the century to the early 20s, he is a character that comes up often more and more again. He's very interesting. It's, it's like he's like a comic book character. So I thought I'd bring him up. <laughs> We get to 1908. This is when the fair comes back. Um, again, this is very strange because the fair was usually in September. It came back again, but in October again. Um, and as a result, there was a huge torrential rain. Uh, the rain stopped and cold weather set in. But again, to prove the point that people wanted the fair, um, the public was not deterred. Um, so many people showed up to the fair that the fair decided to run an extra day. People were so enthralled, so excited to have a fair back. And again, this demonstrated to the county, along with Barney Hahn, that the people of Door County wanted a county fair. In many ways, as, we'll get through, as we get through the fair, you'll see how cathartic the fair was for people. 
It's the end of the tourist season. Uh, you get to go there with your friends, your family, and you get to go, uh, you know, see, see cows and chickens and fruits and vegetables and inventions. So this is, this is starting to demonstrate the strength in the county for a fair. Where was the new location? Uh, the new location is where it is now. After, and, and I thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, after the old fairground burned down, somebody bought it, um, and then they basically tried to fix it up. It didn't work during those 15 years. And then to bring the fair back, they, brought, they bought the land where it is now. Uh, eventually, over time, the fair would be expanded. The fairgrounds would be expanded upon. They'd fix the track and build new buildings. But um, yeah, th thank you for bringing that up. Almost forgot about that. Um, <clears throat> So in the 1910s, this is where the fair starts becoming much more consistent. Uh, this photo from 1911, had um, somebody suggested it could be a baseball game. I'm not quite sure. Um, but I, I, like I said, earliest picture actually from the fair that I could find. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Um, I'm not quite sure who took the photo. I wish I knew a little more. Um, but this is a good example of kind of the, the difficulties I had in finding information on the fair. You'll find, come across random photos like this and not quite sure the context or what. Um, I'm not even quite sure how whoever, whoever found this picture knew it was from 1911. Um, but given the image, I would guess that's probably about right. Um, in 1915, uh, it was decided upon, again, we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit, um, after much research um, and decision making, uh, they decided this would be the 50th anniversary of the fair. Um, because the fair agreed that the first fair was in 1869, but because uh, doings on of trying to get the fair started started in 1865, they decided 1850, or excuse me, 1915. Um, huge cattle auction, baby contest. Uh, for basically a beauty contest for babies. As always, horse racing, baseball games, um, a very, very, very successful fair. Uh, made close to $3,000, which again, probably about $25,000 in today's money, um, all went to the fair. We're gonna jump ahead to another significant fair. Uh, this is 1918. Um, the 1918 fair was significant because it was right during uh, World War I. Um, in fact, to uh, encourage patriotism, uh, what the fair did was host uh, what's known as sham battles. So they had soldiers who were preparing to, to go out or who had come back from the war put on a show of battle. So they would dress tractors as tanks with cardboard pieces. They would dig trenches and host basically like a, a cosplay is what we'd call it nowadays of fair. And they called them sham battles to kind of draw on patriotism to demonstrate what the boys, you know, going over into Europe were, were facing. I find that very interesting because that's something we would never do now. Not the patriotism aspect, but, you know, trying to recreate a battle nowadays to just, you know, the brutalities of World War I especially. So I found that particularly interesting, um, but I appreciate, you know, Door County showing its patriotism. Uh, 1919 was another particularly interesting fair. This was the first fair that had a Ferris wheel in Door County. That was a huge deal at the time. A Ferris wheel is a brand new invention and especially something so significant um, coming to Door County. Um, as you can see here also, this is also around the time period that Door and Kiwani County combined to, do, to run the fair. Um, this was to kind of help save money. Um, both counties wanted to work together, uh, kind of draw bigger crowds. Um, and throughout the history of the fair, uh, Door and Kiwani County would do this quite often. Um, it's kind of hit or miss when they would do it. It wasn't always consistent. It was kind of on how the previous fair had gone. The previous fair hadn't done well. The Door and Kiwani might combine, but it's not always like that. But I find that interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, let's see, we get into the 1920s. Um, this one's, this is really cool. Uh, so like I said, they would have uh, airplanes come, stunt pilots come. Um, this one is when they had an airplane race a car, which I think is really cool. So they would start, the car would start on the ground, or obviously the airplane would start on the ground and then the car would go and see who would win. Um, and these are just crazy stunt pilots who would literally anything for entertainment. Um, if I remember correctly, Brownie the Flying Squirrel actually passed away shortly after their appearance at the Door County Fair. Years later, he crashed. I was going to say, yeah, I couldn't remember exactly when, but, um, but the 1920s is actually, uh, so as you'll see, the only time um, this isn't re the fair isn't reflected in the economy, strangely enough, is the 1920s were a very prosperous period. This is after World War I. The U.S. economy started getting more stable. 
believe it or not, during the 1920s, the fair actually started to decline. Um, it wasn't actually till the 1930s, into the Depression, that the fair actually started doing better. Um, but this ad, uh, Stephen, uh, what specifically year is this from? I know this is from the People Store, but I think this is 24. Okay, from 1924. Um, that was a, um, that was one of the last fairs before it got canceled again. Um, but I do love this image. It's very highly detailed, very of the 20s. <coughs> Um, like I just said, in uh, 1924, the fair got canceled again because it just wasn't doing well enough. Um, but it came back in 1927. Uh, um, and this is kind of, I consider 1927 kind of the shift of more modern, moving into a modern fair. Uh, we get fair secretary Ben Russey, um, but he was right before, he, he ran the fair before uh, John Miles, who... If you guys are familiar with the fair, the fairgrounds is called John Miles Park now. Um, but he, before Miles took over, Ben Rissey kind of started establishing the fair um, um, and kind of getting it back on its feet. Um, again, every time the fair's canceled and it comes back, it comes back even stronger. Um, it, like I said, returned in uh, 1927. Uh, the attendance jumped to, in 24, the attendance was about 7,000. When it returned, it was 11,000. So it almost doubled. Again, every time it's canceled, people clamored for the fair. Every time it came back, people just came rushing into it. It became bigger and better every single time. Um, like I said, new fair management. Um, uh, Russi had been the, the fair secretary. Um, I find this very interesting. He'd actually, he was a high school student um, and at Surgeon Bay High School, he actually ran a junior fair. And it turned out he was so successful at running the junior fair that literally the county called him and asked him, uh, would you like to run the county fair? And he said, absolutely. So he was probably 18 years old and ended up being the fair secretary um, and ran the fair successfully into the 1930s. So they made a very wise decision. Um, I was going to say, uh, yeah, so we're into the 1930s. So right when the Depression hit, like I said, strangely enough, this is probably the highest point at the time of the fair. Again, about 16,000 people in 1931. So every year the fair gets better and better. Uh, part of the reason Ben Russi did so good with the fair is to cut costs. He asked the people of Door County from all over, all the peninsula, uh, to volunteer to help run the fair. So you had people come in, build exhibits, um, on their own time without getting paid. They would volunteer at concession stands. Um, they would help, you know, any way they could, and this helped cut costs. And if you participated in uh, building up the fair, you got in for free. So cutting costs um, really boosted people's enthusiasm, especially during the Depression. Um, you know, when people couldn't afford clothing on their backs, they had one thing to look forward to, and that was the fair. So it's really interesting that it really, really, like, was booming during one of the worst economic crises in the history of the country. Door County Fair was doing amazing. Um, this is a fantastic ad. Um, I love local businesses um, uh, uh, just kind of doing their own ads, um, advertising cars, um, things like that. Because um, everybody always thinks of the fair as an agricultural thing and carnival rides, but car companies used to come and advertise their automobiles. Um, uh, it was a big thing for industrial machinery, tractors, and new inventions. Um, and this demonstrates a good example of that. Uh, one more emphasis on the 30s. Like I said, in about 1931, there's 16,000 people. By 1934, there are 25,000 people coming to the fair. Basically, in four or five years, the fair had almost doubled again in the attendance. Again, this is how much people are clamoring for the fair. Um, it slowly started to phase a little bit towards the end of the 1930s, about 38, 37. Um, and this is where we get into uh, John Miles taking over. So Ben Russi ran, ran it for a decade, was pretty darn successful, um, but he wanted to move on to other things. So we get John Miles. Um, like I said, we'll go, I'll go into him a little bit, but uh, John Miles had been on the, uh, 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 the fair board. He ran, actually ran the concessions. Um, so it was kind of an easy uh, move up for him. Uh, he's very successful in that. Uh, John Miles came here uh, in, to Sturgeon Bay in, uh, I believe he was about 26 years old. Um, he was, had served in World War I. He worked on orchards. Um, 
Um, and he just kind of blended in perfectly. He's if I remember correctly, he's actually originally from Iowa. Um, but as soon as he took over, shock again, another big boom in the fair. Um, this is the, the John Miles era of the fair is kind of well, probably the best known era of the fair. Um, it, it's what most people think of, um, at least older generations think of the fair. Um, these are kind of the most more nostalgia as we get closer to World War II and past. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the fair uh, during the World War II era, um, which is very interesting. Uh, much in the same way as in World War I, um, the patriotism of World War II and the fair uh, uh, was very high. Uh, I'm gonna read a little excerpt from um, the time period. So this is out of The Advocate. Um, war feature at County Fair, uh, this is 1942. Entire theme points towards victory effort. War will be evident everywhere at the Door County Fair that will open the entry day next week, Thursday, August 27th, and last Thursday, Sunday at the 30th. To start with, the city's large contingent of Coast Guardsmen and Navy men when off duty will be there as guests of the Fair Association as a result of the decision to admit all servicemen in uniform without charge. Flags will be flying more than ever. Decorations in general will be patriotic. Exhibits will promote the, f the food for victory drive. The state will play up uh, precautionary measures in preventing diseases from damaging crops. The University of Wisconsin is figuring on showing a clever mechanical hen that gives lots of pointers on how to get the most out of your eggs. Or the most. <laughs> Uh, the Sturgeon Bay School of <laughs> uh, the Sturgeon Bay School of Vocational and Adult Education will have a special booth in the main exhibition building, showing students being taught actual defense welding and pattern making, and providing an exhibit of work done through the courtesy of the Bank of Sturgeon Bay, at which war bonds and stamps may be bought. Uh, defense movies at the Fair Theater. Uh, Miss Ruth Breyer. County nurse and the Door County Council of Defense are cooperating in arrangements to feature the war uh, in movies at the theater, uh, Fair Theater in the 4-H building on the Midway. An interesting program of health films pointed towards fitness for defense. will divide time with a number of films uh, loaned by the Wisconsin County uh, Council of Defense, direct from the State Fair. I just find it very interesting of the kind of features um, you wouldn't quite expect uh, during World War II era. The patriotism, yes, but um, defense films, so kind of what you're thinking of, of, you know, our boys at home kind of films, which, which are the boys at war kind of films, which I find really interesting. Um, but 1943, uh, the fair wouldn't happen uh, directly as a result of the war. Um, there weren't enough uh, volunteers. Um, again, almost, not almost all, but a large number of men were off fighting. Um, so there wasn't enough support at home uh, physical labor to have the fair, um, and it wouldn't uh, uh, come back until 1946. I have a little excerpt here that I find really interesting from after the war. Um, in 1946, obviously the war is still fresh in people's minds um, all over the country, including here. Uh, captured, pardon my language, captured Jap items at a recruiting booth at County Fair here. So they would have military recruiting booths uh, even after the war. Uh, Sergeant William B. Thurston, U.S. Army recruiter in charge of the Sturgeon Bay office, announces there will be a display of captured Japanese small arms, Arctic clothing, and also an amphibious uh, assault boat, commonly referred to as a duck at the Door County Fair this weekend. Many of these items should prove of interest to servicemen who have, been, who have seen them under different circumstances of greater interest to those who have only read of them. A recruiting booth will be located on the fairgrounds, and Sergeant Thurston, who recently returned from a course of instruction at the adjust, uh, adjunct general's school for recruiters, will be glad to answer any questions on Arnie enlistment. Um, some of these things, obviously, language is a little harsh, but understandably given right after the war. Um, but nonetheless, like I said, the fair is an echo um, of the attitudes of the country at the time, not just the county, not just the state of Wisconsin. Um, some of the ads uh, Stephen's been showing um, are from the fair. Some of the crazy thrill, thrill shows. So they'd have stunt drivers. Um, eventually, as you well know, we'll get demolition derbies here, stock car racing. Um, but one of the biggest draws during this time period, besides always horse racing, always horse racing, um, and harness racing, saddle races, horse pole, things like that, stunt drivers. Dora County loved their stunt drivers. Um, 
just absolutely bonkers stuff that even today, I don't think anybody would try, even with modern safe cars and things designed for stunts. Um, but I love this kind of stuff. Um, Obviously, some of the images that Stephen shows are just a sample, small sample of what I found in the newspaper, but I find them particularly <laughs> colorful, let's say. <laughs> yeah, they would have uh, circus acts, or they have um, the, the uh, like basically the Russian bears riding the kind of tiny little motorcy motorcycles, little bicycles and things. Uh, obviously, at the fair, you had carnival shows, acrobats, things uh, people typically think of the fair. Um, my focus is just kind of more on the more spectacular stuff that you wouldn't maybe not expect at the fair or stuff that just stands out. Um, in many ways, the Door County Fair was like other county fairs, um, but a lot of stuff like this really stood out compared to other time periods. Um, and then we get into um, the 1950s. So the 1950s, 60s, and 70s are probably the most consistent time period of the fair. Um, Post-war, like, like the country, um, you know, the baby boom, um, the economy, everything was really growing and uh, uh, expanding. Uh, huge carnival rides, tons, especially in the 40, late 40s, early 50s, um, into the 60s. You get lots of country and western. Um, in fact, in, I believe it was 1958, Gene Autry came here, which I think is absolutely fantastic. I was super excited to read that. But a lot of that kind of thing was a big part. Um, 1951 or 52, there was a huge rodeo. Um, there, now, there are many rodeos that came here, but one of the biggest ones, they had brought over 100 head of cattle, uh, 65 men and women, um, to do an entire show. I can't imagine how spectacular that must have been at the time. Even today, I would go to a show that was 100 head of cattle and 65 men and women doing, like, synchronized rodeos. Um, so like I said, um, I believe that was uh, 51, 52. I know it was the, the 50s. Um, I can't remember this specific image, um, what the date was for that. But that rodeo really just stood out in my head as such a, an image I'm trying to picture. Um, it's almost uh, you know, unbelievable. Um, but like I said, the 1950s um, and, and as we get into the 60s and 70s were really booming for the county, um, the country, um, and clearly the fair. Um, the only, the last hiccup in the fair, um, at least in the 1950s, the 60s and 70s would be smooth sailing, um, would be in 1955. Um, I have one more excerpt uh, I'd like to read out of the newspaper. Um, in 1955, if anybody knows, uh, is because there's a polio epidemic in this country. Um, so it was decided at the last minute to cancel the fair. Uh, there will be no Door County Fair this year. That was the decision made Thursday night by members of the county board. Acting in their capacities as directors of the fair, the board members voted 13 denied and canceled the 1955 fair. A spokesman for the fair board said that the decision to cancel the fair was made as a preemptive measure against a possible outbreak of polio. And because a severe drop in attendance was anticipated because of polio outbreaks in other nearby counties. Although there has only been one case of polio so far this summer in Door County, the canceling of the fair was deemed advisable by the board as a protective measure. A drop in attendance such as ex uh, experienced at other fairs in the state this year could have been uh, expansive. Last year when attendance was at least fair, no pun intended, it was necessary for the county to take $1,600 from the general fund to make up the deficit. The statement was made by a fair official who also said that the chances of the deficit would have been greater yet this year. So that was the last time the fair was canceled, again, up until my ending of my fair knowledge, which is about 1979. Um, was 1955, correct. But the fair ran consistently in the 1960s and 70s. Um, so, uh, the only, now this did, didn't stop anybody from coming to the fair, but I did find it interesting in 1960, um, they decided to stop doing horse races um, they had found that they were losing money on it. John Miles specifically had noted that uh, purses for the, the, the horse races were about $2,000 and they were only making about $600 off of it. So it wasn't worth the time and effort. And then six years later, 1966, they decided to bring it back because the county demanded it. Um, horse racing has been an, always been a really big draw to the county. Um, 
Uh, it, it's just, I find it very interesting. So I'm gonna start wrapping it up a little bit. Again, I apologize. I'm trying to compress about 100 years of fair into a short period of time. Um, trying to pick highlights has been really difficult. Um, trying to talk about everything has been very difficult. Um, I wanna talk more about the fair. I could spend the rest of the night if you would allow me to talk about the fair. Um, this is my love. I've become very attached to the fair. Um, but we'll end, uh, or I'll, we'll start you know, slowing down a little bit in about 1971. Uh, this is when John Miles retires. Um, this, it was made by the county. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure why the county decided, but 1971 was considered uh, uh, the Centennial Fair. Again, not quite sure why they decided 19, 1871 was the first fair. It was 1869. But the county decided 1871 was the 100th anniversary of the fair. Um, and it's the year John Miles retired. Um, but it was a particularly expansive, um, large fair. Probably uh, the largest fair of my research was uh, the Centennial Fair. Again, John Miles' last fair. Um, there we go. Uh, Dottie West, who is a well-known country music star, came. Uh, she used to actually sing with Elvis quite often. Uh, League of Women Voters uh, came to help uh, women register to vote in the county. Uh, tetanus shots were offered um, for free, uh, especially to, to farmers, um, which some of you might giggle at, but at the time, a lot of farmers weren't going to doctors, so to, to, to offer that to them um, was a good way to get them you know, tetanus shots. Uh, tractor pull, uh, motorcycle racing, this was a huge deal, especially in the 70s uh, for the Door County Fair. Uh, snowmobile drag racing, which I find absolutely fascinating. I'm curious about this. <laughs> Uh, harness and saddle races, uh, demolition derby. I was going to ask when that began. I was going to say, demolition derby started uh, in the late 60s. So about 67, 68 is when they really started doing demolition derby. Um, but that became a huge draw. Um, like I said, as horse racing kind of, when they were trying to get rid of horse racing, it didn't really work. They tried to fill that gap with things like demolition derbies, motorcycle racing, stock car racing. Um, again, more modern racing that we think of today. Uh, motorcycle racing, I learned, was a huge draw here. The motorcycle culture here was actually quite deep. Uh, I talked to my dad about this because um, he brought it up. So my dad, he was a teenager in the, in, the, in the early 70s, and he said he used to read Cycle Magazine. And he said he remembers ev uh, in the early 70s they would have articles about the draw of the Door County Fair. People from all over, not just the state, not just the, the country, people from all the world would come to the Door County Fair because of the races. I find that endlessly interesting. Unfortunately, I was actually looking through my dad's old motorcycle magazines, hoping I could find the, one of the articles that talked about the Door County Fair, but I couldn't. I was very disappointed. Um, but I just, it's one of the many things about the fair people don't talk about, don't remember, forget, or it's just kind of, you know, ignored, which is okay. Um, but nonetheless, uh, like I said, I, I only uh, did up to 1979. Um, that's as far as I, I got. Um, by no means is that the end of the fair, as you all well know. The fair is still going on strong. The fair is still doing great. Um, after doing this talk, I realized that I want to keep going. I need to go look at the newspaper, the actual physical newspaper archives, not just the online ones. Microfilm. Um, and one of the other things I wanted to bring up, um, this is an, actually a great opportunity um, to ask you all if any of you have any information or want to come talk to me about the fair, memories you have of the fair, experiences you had at the fair, I would love to talk to you more about that. Um, obviously, I'm... How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say that. That's, that's, that was my whole night was leading up to this. But um, again, as a young person who is not from the county and only has you know, little vacation memories of the fair, I want to talk to people who remember the fair, um, who went there every year, uh, whose childhood experiences revolved around the county fair. For those of you who are obviously from here, um, so on my la I'm going to do one more anecdote out of the newspaper, um, and it's an interview with John Miles, um, if I can find it. Here we go. It's an interview with John Miles talking about his experience with the fair. I, th th I think this uh, article talking about when he retired, his summation of his experience uh, in the county in the fair, uh, perfectly summarizes not only Door County, but the Door County Fair. John Miles, affable secretary of the Door County Fair, has almost uh, half of his lifetime dedicated to the fair. 
Uh, the county is going to miss his, uh, or, excuse me, he is going to miss his old job. Headaches, heartaches, and all. You don't just step out of the exposition world without uh, uh, having a few regrets. The newly retired secretary talked about the old days a few days before his testimonial dinner on Tuesday. A modest man with a wry sense of humor, John emphasized that part of the community has played in his career. I had the help of a lot of responsible, dedicated citizens, he declared. Without them, I could have never done it. Maybe so, but John, whether he likes to admit it or not, has been guiding hand, the buck stopper, chairman of the complaint department, and decision maker for most of the past of 43 years. It takes a unique person to do what John Miles has done, and for being the type of individual who takes le uh, leaps and bounds he deserves all the kudos. John has to uh, hear, uh, bear, excuse me, bear the full responsibility. John hates write-ups that sound like obituaries. So other than mentioning he was born in 1893 and has served there the fair board since 1928, uh, secretary since 1937, we'll skip the chrono chronological order of this all. We'll talk instead of nickel beers, picnics, lunches, Mark shills, games of skill, polio epidemics, and rain. Even as a terminal optimist like Miles who has to confess, fair prospects were dim in 1928. He recalls the narrow midway, absence of lighting, rundown buildings, inadequate financing. Those were the days when most fairgoers pulled up on a horse and buggy drawn by old Dobbin, stayed until dark, went home to do chores, stayed home, come dusk, the gates were closed. This was, of course, the Prohibition era. It wasn't until 1933 when spirits again became legal the Casey Lautenbach of Egg Harbor was permitted to dispense good-sized glasses of brew for five cents. <laughs> Miss Lautenbach flipped hamburgers while uh, imbibers took turns uh, treating each other. The men liked to line up at Casey's stand. For 50 cents, they could buy drinks for the house and still have change for a hamburger. <laughs> Horse racing was the main attraction. Uh, from 1928 till 1959, with the exception of World War II, racing took precedence over uh, most grandstand attractions. While the fairgrounds were used to ho uh, house uh, Smith shipbuilding equipment, junior fairs were being held at the high schools. These, John explains, were strictly exhibits. Other than that, the only year the fair was canceled out was in 1955. When polio epidemic curtailed all public gatherings. By this time, night fairs outdrew daytime crowds. And thanks to John Anderson, a skilled local electrician, the fair had been adequately lighted since 1937. As self-styled chairman of the complaint department, John heard a share of gripes, mostly from brawny young men believing themselves duped by crooked operators of the games of chance. One such fellow who had spent the better part of a $10 bill trying to win a Cupid doll to, uh, came up to John boiling mad. John says, that guy over there, or excuse me, I, I, I always mi uh, mispronounce that Cupid doll. That's the guy, Cupid. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I knew what, you know what? I didn't butcher anybody's name. I butchered Cupid doll. <laughs> that guy gave me this little doll and jipped me out of this big one. He exploded. After listening patiently while we would be athlete told John everything that was wrong with the midway, the secretary walked up to the operator and asked him confidently, the little Cupid doll, Cupid, Cupid doll, <laughs> oh my gosh, how much did the Cupid doll cost? Cost me a nickel wholesale, the vendor admitted. How much is the big doll? 14 cents. John flicked a quarter and says, here, give him the big doll and keep the change. John ran a good, clean fare. Only games of skill had been permitted since bingo and gambling were outlawed in the 30s. He also banned pitchmen and made sure the one, that once a fellow was caught running a crooked game of chance, he never came back. Miles called the, Door County's, called the fair Door County's biggest community enterprise. With 70% of the proceeds returned to the people of Door County, he made sure the wholesome family entertainment was the rule rather than the exception, and that the fair never turned to a glorified carnival. He also impressed with the number of young people who participated in the program. Kids do a wonderful job selling buttons, he, he beamed. Last summer, 70% of the attendance was uh, those under the age of 24. The fairs have changed throughout the years. People no longer eat picnic lunches with their buggies, nor do they go home at dusk or think a horse is the greatest possible treat, but some things like guys trying to win a Cupid doll for their girl never changes. So with that, I would like to end my uh, talk on the fair. Um, does anybody have any questions? I kind of went a little quick at some places. I skipped some things, um, but I am always open, like I said, to talk. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm trying to get this clear in my head. Yeah. So when, uh, um, 
It was the Tommy Fairs was first run by an independent organization, or was it always the relationship where it was a sub part of the county? So it was always part of the County of Door. So it was originally started by the Agricultural Society of Door County, which essentially is the county. Does that make sense? Um, so, so the Agricultural Society owned the property by Sunset Yeah. And then they went bankrupt. So then how did it make the, how was their transition? So basically, uh, when it went bankrupt, it was dissolved. And then in 1908, when it came back, they basically started from the ground up. But they made another Door County Agricultural Society with new members. So it kind of dissolved after it went bankrupt. Does that make sense? Again, things like that, I, I could go into more detail, but I wasn't completely clear. And that's, you know. What property, do you know whose farm that was where, where it sits now? With family farm. No, um, that's one thing, and that's a good example of, of me going through the fair. It just says, the Door County Agriculture Society bought this property. And I'm like, but whose property? Um, I was going to say, Father, do you know? Well, Uncle, Uncle Tommy, which is my uncle, one of my top father, has a property here, and I think he gave something to the fair, obviously all of it, because it's on property still there. When I was a kid, I used to go there and help them clean the barns and the stalls and stuff like that. So we were always here overnight at the fair the last night. That was our big uh, thing to do the next day was clean up the shit in the uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was always That always went back to his, uh, his farm. So. Yeah, well, yeah, the tongs played a huge role in the history of the fair from the beginning. Horse racing and, yeah, and... Uh, Pardon me, I can't remember. After John Miles retired, one of the Tongs took over Bill, as Bill, Bill Tong as fair secretary. So I, that, I mean, that's a good example of of, of people I haven't men even mentioned. Um, but the, the Tongs played a huge role in the history of the fair. So that actually wouldn't surprise me um, if the fairgrounds basically bought, you know, from the Tongs the, the fairgrounds that we know of today. So. Was the question where the first fairgrounds were? The original fairgrounds? Um, they, they still exist. Um, there, if you go down Colorado Street through the old Defense Homes neighborhood, you're driving essentially across the old racetrack yeah. of the fairgrounds. So that area back in Belmar Place that's now being excavated as the senior center where Arley Field was, that is the original Door County Fairgrounds. Yes, that's the original if you look fairgrounds. On Google Earth or see satellite photography of that neighborhood, you'll see going north, coming out of that Defense Homes neighborhood, the outline of the old racetrack is still visible there. Yeah. So, it's, and we do have photographs on Google, on Google Earth. If you go on Google Maps and look, you'll be able to see that because it was pounded down so much by all the horse racing, that when they put the cherry orchards in afterward, they left that circle of the racetrack unplanted and used it as an access road. Yep. So you can still see, even if you drive down Colorado and look, there's a small perceptible indentation on the ground where the racetrack would have crossed the road. So it's still there. It's still there. It is? Yes, sir. Father Tony spent a lot of time at the fair. I wonder what kind yes. of observations he has. Some of the fair for us, Father. I was going to say, give me some good, uh, <laughs> give me some good juicy stories about the fair. As, as someone who's there. I think someone to go home. At your leisure. I look at the fair more in the exhibiting part, and of course, our family was very, very much involved. And you did mention Ben Russi. He began the 4-H club back in the early 20s. And my dad showed the first, his first calf, and that's been uh, 1922. And that has continued in the Birdsell family through Teresa Kinnard, who was a Birdsell, and so forth. So I can't help but being a part of this. My mother also was in 4-H and went to the state fair in 1922 in 1923, canning and demonstrating, and I have her state fair ribbons uh, to this day after 1922 and 1923. So uh, I uh, showed a couple posters in 1941 through the school. 1945 was rally day, just for 4 H. I had a calf and two sheep, and then 1946. 
I showed most everything from chickens to mostly cattle. And uh, of course, uh, the agricultural agent, Mullendore, was very, very uh, supportive of the county fair at that time, too. And uh, I remember miles and snap shows and so forth. Carnival was much, much bigger in those days. Well, I, I wrote down a few things here, too. Uh, harness racing, yes, I would go up to the track from the cattle barn, the Reinhardt's, the Tongs. Um, I remember a horse from, um, I remember a horse from, uh, oh, no, no. I Goldie May. It was a tremendous mayor. Yeah, it was, uh, I remember who drove it and who owned it. It was a borrower from Egg Harbor. Um, so when I was, I was ordained in 1960, and of course I kind of ended my story at that time. And lo and behold, in 1987, I, um, I was brought back to Door County uh, by the bishop to take care of Corpus Christi Parish and with the relatives and friends and a few. Uh, 4-H kids in the parish, it all began again. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I'm upset, and of course this year, I don't know how much I can take anymore because it's getting, my legs are. But I did have 84 entries this year. <laughs> 41 chickens and eight, uh, 20, uh, 42 flowers. So <laughs> it's quite a few. Anyway. Hit 90. Beat your lang chance, Father, to this day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember his dark brahmas. Yeah, he had some dark brahmas, good ones. And he got them from the same hatchery that I got some. Uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. So um, the state fair and the county fair, very, very important. Yes, I want to meet you sometime. <laughs> and talk about it because, talk about Jimmy Lynch. I remember Grandma Bertzel bringing all of his grandchildren to the grandstand for the Jimmy Lynch. I, I don't know. I don't think I walk across the road anymore for some. I mean, it's just about <coughs> you were dreaming about that. <laughs> cars flying over one another. <laughs> <laughs> All kind of stuff. But uh, very, very interesting. Sleeping down at the fair with the cattle. Oh my, oh my. All the different things. So I don't know. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, this is a gentleman you should talk to. <laughs> How many ribbons have I won? Well, it's on the video. Yeah. Uh, about three years ago, uh, Kevin O'Donnell, anybody know him? He stopped by my place and said, I want to write up something about you. Well, you, you, I've been told you know a lot about Door County. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so anyhow, and he found out I was involved in the county fair and um, so he says, uh, and I said, well, I have a few ribbons. And he said, well, I showed him. But he said, you know what? I want to take a picture of this. So up in my uh, property now, there's a, a grain raid, almost like a, almost looked like a church. So maybe some of you saw that uh, yeah. Yeah. photo that he took. In any sense, um, and I found more ribbons after that he had over 2,000. Oh, 2,000. Wow. Oh, so anyhow, I'm upset with that. <laughs> no, you aren't all blue. No. <laughs> we're in January. <laughs> Do you have them in books? What's that? Do you have your, your ribbons, uh, ribbons yes. like in, in book? And no, I got them in some plastic. They're all in bottles, blue ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think I've talked to them. Is that a question or anything? Yes. I got a question. I, I heard your initial comment was that 1869 Sunset Park is where the fair got started. Now that's what it says in the newspaper. Then I heard in the Colorado place, so I suppose that's the second maybe location. Yeah. And then as the current, are there any missing in between the, the, in the I, I, I believe it was uh, where the mill is in that area where Polish has his farm. I don't know what the first thing is. That was the site of a fair for a couple of years ago. That was Hans Fair, I think. Well, maybe it was. Barney oh, Hans. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, that might have been Barney Hans Fair. See, yeah, oh, notorious that's unofficial that's fair. That's yeah. Where the settle lived mm -hmm. up in that area, and he was involved in that. Yeah. So, so, in other words, there's been 
Sunset Park, Colorado Place, and basically over to where it is at the present. Four fairgrounds, maybe even more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> over the years. But it's 150 years. It's, it's a pretty so, decent record. If any of you get fair fever, the only thing that takes care of that is no medication, but exhibiting and going there. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Fantastic. If you guys ever feel like uh, uh, discussing the fair with us, um, please come to the Door County Historical uh, Museum. We would love to talk to you. We'd love to uh, just hear what you know, you're rem remembering. I would love to talk to you more, as you'd mentioned. <laughs> um, but thank you guys for having me. Um, thank you for being here. Um, I had a really good time talking to you guys at the fair. Um, it, again, as someone who's not from this area, I find this endlessly fascinating. I hope you find it as fascinating as I did. Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you so very much.